and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I'll be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest for Talk Art is Eric St. George's. He is a sculptor who is interested in showing the movement and expressing the energy of his models. And he is here to discuss the lost wax process that he uses in casting his bronzes. So welcome, Eric. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Well, excellent. So you have some very beautiful, interesting work. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved in sculpting. So actually, my background is engineering. And then uh, after my engineering studies, I was uh, interested in uh, drawing. And uh, I went to an art school in Paris. Oh. But then I met a sculptor, and I spent a few months with him. And that's really where I learned how to, to sculpt. And, uh, but then I didn't think I could have an engineering, uh, a, an art uh, career, and went back to engineering. Right. And then only a few years ago, I went back to art full time. So sculpting is, all of these sculptures are new for you. About yes. how many years have you been sculpting? Full time, three years. Three years, yes. excellent. Yes. So tell us about your medium. What is your favorite? So my favorite medium is clay. Ah. And then after that, uh, when I like the piece, I uh, cast it in bronze. Bronze. Yes. OK. So let's take a look at a few of your images that you brought and talk about some of your sculptors. sculptures. Okay. So this one, uh, Becky is sitting, uh, this one is done from life, like many of my sculptures. And I often give the name of the model to my pieces. And uh, this one, uh, I used a red clay, um, which is uh, I like to work with. Feels very realistic looking. Mm. This one, Emily, uh, that's a different kind of clay. It's a very interesting clay, because uh, when I work it, it's uh, brown. And uh, when I uh, fire it, it becomes this beautiful black. Wow, look at that. So this, uh, this one, Pearl, uh, and that, the three pictures that I'm going to show here are showing a, a little bit of the process I go through when I do my sculpture. This one is the first pose, uh, very figurative, like a study. And from that same pose, I did a second one, which is this one where I kind of start to abstract the piece. I don't have the arms anymore. I focus on really the, the movement and the pose and keeping the most interesting for me. Is this still clay, this part? This one is still clay, yes. OK, so you're working with clay first. Yes, yes. And then uh, that's from the same pose, with the, still in front of the model, I started to really abstract it and uh, remove all the features in that case. And that's uh, the third iteration. And out of this one, I made a bronze, because I like that one. So that is still the clay piece? Yes. OK. Yes. Now this is interesting. Tell so, me about the drawings. So this one is a drawing. I like to do very quick drawings. This one is a two-minute drawing from life. And uh, in, that in that particular case, I took that drawing and used it uh, to create a another piece of sculpture, which is this one. Oh, interesting. So that, so, was, so, that yes. started as the drawing. Yes, this one started as a drawing, and then I went, uh, went back to uh, my studio. And uh, instead of having a model in front of me, I was just kind of uh, inspired by the uh, drawing. Beautiful. That's another case where uh, this drawing also was done in front of the model. Uh, again, uh, I like to draw very fast. I like to uh, start with charcoal and uh, watercolor. and. Uh, very rarely I touch the, the, the drawing when, I back, uh, when I'm back home. So this so is more like a gesture drawing, almost. Very gestural. And uh, from that particular drawing, I made uh, 
another sculpture, but this one uh, carved it in stone. Oh, beautiful. This is an uh, alabaster stone, which is a pretty soft stone, very beautiful to, uh, to carve. So you carve and you cast bronze and you use clay? Yes. Excellent, <laughs> beautiful. So this one is, is the biggest bronze I've made so far. Uh, this one is four feet tall. It's uh, 105 pounds wow. because it was uh, bigger than what uh, we could cast in one piece. I had to cast it in four pieces and uh, then weld them together. Is it solid? No, no, no. Oh. That would be. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> that would be very, <laughs> very heavy. This one, 105 pounds, and it's hollow. hollow. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. And so um, that was uh, my first uh, big challenge in making bronze. So this one is uh, the piece that I'm going to use to demonstrate the bronze process. This one is uh, called Ali. That's the name of the model we posed for, for that clay. And uh, this, uh, this one is, uh, is the clay, and I'm going to because I liked it, uh, I cast it in bronze, and I'm going to show you the process. Yeah, well, let's go to your demo now and take a look at what you have. So I don't have the clay with me today. So to illustrate that, I'm going to uh, use this one, which the same as the clay. So the first thing that you need to do is to make a mold. And the mold is done in several pieces. So I would uh, make the, the mold. I would put my piece like this, and I would create a mold, a flexible part of the mold, which will go like this. What is that made out of? This is rubber. Rubber. Yes. And uh, in order, because it's flexible, I need to make a harder part to hold it in place. And is that plaster? And this is plaster. So once this, when I do one side, Of course, that takes a little bit of more time than what I'm doing here, because I need to do the rubber in uh, several layers, brushing the rubber on the piece. So you paint it on. So th in that case, yes. There's other method to do that. Uh, if I use silicone, I can pour the silicone. In that case, this is a brush on process. So I do the second side, and then I, I do the, uh, what we call the mother mold here. And then I have my mold here. So for the rest of the demonstration, uh, w once the mold is done, then you remove the uh, you remove the mold. So that's exactly what we would do with the piece. So this is my original piece. Okay. Then I can put back my mold together. Is your original piece usually clay? Yes. OK. Yes. Sometimes it's uh, the, the clay w without uh, before the being fired. But uh, most of the time, I fire the piece, and I make the mold around it. So I have my mold here that I can hold together. And that's where? I use the, uh, the mold, pouring some liquid wax in the mold. Oh. And then if I want my bronze to be hollow, I have to just move the wax in there and pour the rest so that there's only one layer of wax in the mold. So when this is done, I open my mold. And then this is the wax oh. that uh, is created like this. So you see, it's, it's very light. It's much lighter than the bronze. Right. And in that case, it is uh, hollow. For small pieces, I would have it solid. It right. would be simpler. But uh, in a piece like this, in bronze, it's already, already 20 pounds. If it was solid, it would be very, very right. heavy, besides some other technical uh, issues. So once I have that, that wax, what I need to do is create so what we call a, a cup and a gating so that I can bring the bronze into that piece. Because imagine that I want to cast that in bronze, I would 
need to bring the bronze in there. So I need to make a funnel, basically, that's that cup here. And I connect that cup with gates. And this is a picture that uh, we're going to show you right oh, now. So that's how the bronze gets into the edges. Yes, because, yes, exactly. That's, uh, we pour, pour the bronze into the, the cup here and through the gates, which connect uh, the cup to the wax. The bronze can flow. Well, let's take a look at the images that you have and some videos about your process that you took in the studio. Yes, so this is the piece that uh, I showed you here with the cup and the, uh, the gate connected. So once I have this piece, I take that piece and I dip it into a slurry, which is which is here. So this is, this, this, is, is this is the piece once I dip it in the, uh, in the slurry, which is a binder that I mix with a silica. And I do that in several layers, about 10 layers. And uh, that becomes very hard. And it can also sustain the temperature of the bronze. So once I have that. But and that does not melt the wax. That, the no. wax is in there. In there, OK. So the next step is to remove the wax and melt the wax from there. So in order to do that, I bring it to in. So this is the wax. Uh, which is, we can see at the bottom of the uh, of the slurry uh, of the piece with the slurry. So that I put that in the furnace to melt the wax. This is the furnace that we use to melt the wax. It's a uh, a gas furnace, and we bring that piece uh, that we ha that we have here. Uh, the temperature goes up to sixteen. Fahrenheit and melt the wax here. And I have a video to show you how that works. So inside there is your sculpture? So yes. And uh, this is the furnace here. And this is a piece being burned out. And so the, the temperature is uh, moving up. And the, melt, uh, the, the wax is melted and uh, is pulled underneath the, uh, the furnace. So once the, uh, the piece, uh, the slurry, uh, the ceramic shell, we call that a ceramic shell, has been burned out and heated, it becomes white and it becomes very hard. And it's hollow now because there's no more wax in there. Right. And that's what we're going to use to pour the bronze. OK, so the wax is where the was where the bronze is going. Exactly. OK. So this is the bottom of the, uh, of the shell. And you can see the shape of the cup. And you can see the holes, which are the gates, bringing the bronze into the, uh, into the piece. And the gates are those red yes. pipes that you showed. Yes. OK. So before we uh, can pour the bronze, we have to melt the bronze. And this is the, the other furnace that we use to melt the bronze. The bronze melts around, start to melt at 18, 1800 degrees. And then typically we pour around 2000, 20, 2100 degrees. Wow. So here wow. The, the bronze is melted. Look at all the equipment that you need. Yes, it's very hot. I burned my hair several times there. <laughs> so here we are removing the, uh, the scurries. Which the, the slag that uh, is coming to the top of the melted bronze. Then we uh, take the crucible out and move it. We have a crane because it's pretty heavy. Oh, yeah. And you don't want to get close to it. No. And we start to pour into the, uh, into the shell, which is put upside down like this. So your sculptures are in there upside down going along the edges where the wax was. What are you wearing? Oh, we wear uh, these, uh, first the gloves yes. and, the, and the helmet, because it's uh, very, very uh, hot. And you cannot uh, look at this without being uh, very uh, burned if you don't have that. And then this is uh, a tradition. Once we have poured the bronze, we just throw in a penny 
<laughs> and and the okay. penny is burning. It's uh, burning with this green light, and that's the penny for the god of bonds. Ah, okay. So that's the little, uh, the little uh, yellowish uh, spot uh, dot that you see on the bonds. So the next step is uh, to break the shell. Oh, and the the okay. shell is broken every time. So that the whole process that I showed you is. Uh, uh, called the lost wax process because every time we do that we lose the wax and we lose the the mold so we have to start over with the initial uh, mold. Reproductions are starting from the beginning from yes. the original clay piece. All right. uh, no, from the mold that we made from, from the first mold. From okay. the first mold. So here we are we breaking the shell and using hammer and some power tools sometimes and then uh, we uh, cut off the gates And sometimes we have to do, there are some defects, so I have to do, in that case, I had to do some welding on the piece. Uh, so I used some uh, TIG welder, uh, and uh, then we have some grinding to do. That's what is called the chasing. Mm -hmm. So once the, uh, the piece, the, the, cur the, sorry, the gates have been cut off, the cup has been cut off, and the chasing has been made, which consists in a, making uh, all the traces of the, uh, of the gates disappear by uh, trying to uh, uh, reproduce the uh, texture of the, of the piece where we had some welding or the, uh, the rest of the, of the gates. We have that piece that we sandblast to uh, remove all the, the, the little pieces of shell which might stay in there and to have uh, something which is ready to, be, uh, to get the patina. So what is interesting in that case is that the, uh, the bronze get oxidized very quickly. This is the same piece as the previous picture, just a couple of hours after the sun blasting. And you wow. can see the color change uh, appearing causes, very quickly. What causes that? The humidity and it's uh, like uh, the bronze is uh, getting rusted. Oh, interesting. But that goes so fast that sometimes it's really surprising. So the next step after that is the patina. And patina is a process, a chemical process, which uh, oxidizes the surface of the bonds. And depending upon the chemical that we use, uh, we're going to uh, have different colors. So this is the video of uh, the uh, patina that I did on this piece. So the first thing I do is heating the piece and then spraying some chemicals. In that case, some chemicals, which is a titanium oxide, and which create an underlayer uh, white. And then I can spray another chemical here, the ferric uh, nitrate, which is going to create this uh, yellow orange color. And that's done heating the bronze. Yes, and here you can see the, the vapor of the uh, of the uh, liquid uh, being uh, vaporized uh, when touching the bronze. So that's the final piece. And uh, that's the piece uh, which is uh, there. And you can do more than just bronze, right? So one possibility also, you can use the same process uh, to cast aluminum, which aluminum. is the, the case with uh, that piece. That's the same piece in aluminum. But it's exactly the same process. Same process. Yes. Pouring, heating the aluminum, pouring it? Yes, except the aluminum is poured at a lower temperature. Oh, okay. Can and you use other metals as well? Yeah, I can uh, do that in uh, iron, but iron is uh, using a uh, much higher temperature, so it's uh, not as easy. Okay, so you, that's one process you have. You have a much more complicated process that involves this beautiful sculpture here. So tell us a little bit about the sculpture, and then we can see how it's created. So this sculpture, it came from uh, a piece that I had done in clay initially. And then I wanted to uh, create a story around that clay. So I took that piece and uh, added uh, this sphere around the piece. And, uh, and then making it in bronze was much more complicated because it's, uh, it's not uh, as simple as the one I showed you. And uh, the, the gating is more complicated. The, the mold is much more complicated. Well, let's take a look at those images that you took pictures of the process. So yes. Let's see those and we can talk a little bit about that. <laughs> 
So when you look at that, wow. that's the whole gating of the piece, which is much more involved than the gating of uh, the previous piece that I showed here. So the bronze flows through all of those little tubes yes. into it. One, one of the things that you want to make sure is that the f there is a nice flow of the bronze uh, which can reach all the parts of the, of the piece before it freezes and uh, solidifies. So you have to calculate that and to, uh, to make sure that uh, the gates are going to uh, bring the bronze nicely. But if you put too much gates, that's a lot of work to cut them off. Right. Smooth them out, make yes. the texture the same. Yes. And so that's the, the piece uh, which is uh, uh, deep into the slurry to get the ceramic shell. So on that piece, uh, that piece was just enough, uh, just uh, small enough to get in my furnace. Okay. And good. so uh, I had to practice 10 or 20 times to how to put in the furnace and take it back before I do that with the furnace at uh, high temperature. Right. You because don't. I don't want to spend more than five seconds doing that. It's no. too hot. Interesting. And so that's the, uh, the final piece here that I, after I did the patina, in that case, the blue patina using uh, actually a cold, this is a cold patina using ammonia, which is uh, just a house, uh, house ammonia. And uh, that patina takes much more time to, uh, to get to that color. It takes a, a three or four days. Uh, deep into uh, in a vap container with uh, ammonia vapors. Well, that's beautiful. Very nice work. So you have a lot of very abstract work, which is really interesting. And in the Im in the JPEG images, they look huge. I thought they were giant sculptures, and they're, they're, some of them are quite small and lovely. Yes. Uh, so. Um, Making a big bronze is, uh, is difficult, takes time, a lot of work. So um, a small bronze uh, allows me to uh, get my ideas uh, quickly. And uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's the size I'm comfortable with between these and, and maybe uh, 20 inch inches. Yes. So tell us where people can see your art. You have some upcoming shows, so why don't you tell us about Okay, so I have that. a show coming up at the uh, San Mateo City Hall oh, nice. uh, that I'm going to set up tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> you know, and uh, I have also another show in, uh, in uh, San Francisco, which is uh, more about drawing, because uh, with uh, four other artists, we're going to draw life in front of the public. Oh, so. And the public uh, will be able to buy the drawings on the spot. Oh, nice. So are there sculptures going to be there as well? So I, have, I will have a few sculptures exhibited here. There's a show uh, starting uh, on, uh, actually, uh, this weekend for until the end of April, okay. and an opening uh, this coming Saturday. So San Mateo City Hall, tell us a little bit about that show. Oh, that will be, uh, I will have, a, I, I think, 15 or 20 sculptures there. Uh, they have a, a regular uh, Rodini exhibit uh, where uh, they the, uh, selection, uh, they cho choose some artists. There is a call for entry and uh, uh, the uh, artists have their work shown there for a month. And then it goes also to the uh, library. So I have one month at the city hall and one month at the library. So is it a solo show? Or it's is a it solo, show. solo show. It's not, it's not nice. big. It's two, uh, two big cases. Well, still, but, that's uh, nice, though. But people, it's, yes. It's nice when people can come and see your work in a public space like that. Yes. So we have a couple more minutes. So. These beautiful little pieces, when you're with the model, how do you quickly come up with these ideas? So the, uh, the first thing I, we do is uh, working with the model to have a nice, interesting pose. Uh, and I like to have uh, some dynamics and some nice movement. And, uh, and then uh, I start to, uh, to uh, 
work with the clay and my favorite tool is actually just a simple kitchen knife. Kitchen that, knife? Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite because it allows me to go very quickly and cut. And, so uh, these smooth lines, all of that. Well, and this one? Yes, same thing here. And uh, on this one, uh, I can uh, I leave the, uh, the traces of the teeth of the, of the knife. That gives us oh, some. Oh, I see that on some, purpose. On purpose, that leaves the uh, the texture of the tool, and uh, I like to uh, leave that here rather than trying to make something very realistic and perfect from the anatomy point of view. So you're you're more interested in the abstract. So yes. tell us a little bit about that one. There's no arms, no head. What? That one. Uh, that one. I did that very you. quickly. I took me maybe ten minutes to do that one. Uh, at the end of the pose, uh, I uh, took a block of clay and just I wanted just to have a few cuts in there. And uh, you can see here that it's really uh, really cut in a, in a few p in a few uh, places, and uh, and that was it. I didn't want anything else. Well, it's beautiful, and it definitely looks like you've caught them in motion, like mm. they're just about ready to move on to the next space. So yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here on Talk Art. This has been a wonderful show. Oh, and that was a I, great pleasure to be here. Yeah, well, thank you for letting us know about the bronze process, lost wax. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.